Yeah, every team is a completely new challenge. You know, it's like having a new kid. You have every, I got three sons. They're all different. They're all different challenge. Uh, uh, anybody that's a parent can understand that. And so uh, I love that though. You know, they all have their own personality. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. And, and uh, you start over every year. So I love that part though. Welcome to a special edition of Talking About Sports from the 2019 ACC Football Kickoff with Charles Arbuckle and Reggie Walker. We had some hot weather here in Charlotte, Red, and I think the alarm is going off yeah. in here, but nobody's leaving. No, but no, they are not leaving because it's colder in here than it is outside. <laughs> and nobody messing with this Carolina heat right now because yeah. it's been hot. ACC Media Day usually we get barbecue today, sandwiches, cold cuts because they're trying to cool us off. Trying to keep everybody cool. But the Atlantic seems to keep going along very hot in yep. this. If you think about it, Clemson, Syracuse. Uh, NC State, BC, that's the order of finish. There were a couple others, but I really want to focus on those. Yeah. But with Clemson, you think about this Clemson ball club, what is it that they have to do to get themselves in a position again to challenge for the championship in the ACC, but get to the college football playoff? Well, it's interesting you say that because one of the strengths of this team, as explosive as they've been, has been defense. Yep. And I think the issue right now, I wouldn't even call it an issue for this team is, what do we know about some of the guys coming up on defense? They've played a lot, yeah. but in situations of being substitutes, uh, giving guys rest, uh, playing in a lot of blowouts. So some of these guys, particularly on the defensive line, yeah. that we haven't seen a lot of have played, but we haven't seen them in a situation where they have to play 40, 50, 60 snaps a game. How do they respond to that? But I think on the offensive side, when you think about guys like T. Higgins coming back, uh, Trevor Lawrence, the running back core with Feaster and ETN, yeah. I'm not concerned about that group at all. It, it's, it's whether or not these guys on the defensive side of the football, particularly in the front seven, who haven't played heavy, heavy snaps, yeah. how do they respond? One of the things you bring up is interesting, and we'll go back to offense. Amari Rogers hurt in the spring. They think they'll get him back. He was an all-everything guy yeah. for Clemson. But if you look at defense, I'm glad you went there, and I want to stay there a little bit because they lost some of their linebacking crew. Mm -hmm. That fabulous defensive front. Over the last five years, this stat stood out to me, 41 sacks or more over the last five years. That's unbelievable. And they didn't do it always with a lot of added pressure, meaning five no. or six or dogs no. or blitzes. But they can do that. They can bring the kitchen sink. But I think with this defense now, losing that linebacking core like they did, uh, they have some young guys back, but defensive front, you talked about that. But what is it going to take for them to not give up the big play over the top, especially if they're not bringing as much pressure as they normally do? Well, I think I think what you're going to see from this group, um, they're going to they're probably not going to take as many chances in the back end yep. as they did because they don't have that group up front that they anticipate getting there. Yep. So guys are going to probably be coached a little bit more of keep things in front of you at least until they get comfortable midway through the season. Then guys may take more chances trying to make picks. And I think the other thing they'll coach is hey, remember, and and a lot of defensive backs will tell you this. You know, playing tight end, a lot of times if your quarterback's through interceptions, when was it against zones? Yeah. Not against man, yeah. because a lot of times against man, coach, quarterbacks are just not going to take that <laughs> shot because that coverage is there. Yeah. But in a zone, they think they've got more space. I think you might see Clemson play a little bit more zone, particularly early in the year, and, and try to attack the football coming downhill to create big plays and create turnovers that way yeah. from the defensive side of the ball. But I, I still don't anticipate seeing a lot, a lot of heavy blitz packages, especially from those linebackers, because that group's got to really get acclimated to what they're doing. To Xavier's up front coming back, one of the highly touted young yeah. man, and then also Tanner Muse, who is here. Yeah. And that's the thing in the secondary. I think that's when you look at this team. Brent Venables has a good base there. Yeah. Offensively, you talked about it, the explosive nature. Loaded. They lose a couple of offensive linemen, guys that have been around the program for a long time. But what I will say about this offense, and talking to their co-offensive coordinator a few years ago, Jeff Scott, mm -hmm. he was telling me, this young man that we have coming as a quarterback, is going to probably be a first round draft pick, maybe the first player pick. Yeah. Kelly Bryant was in the position, did a nice job for four weeks, but everybody knew. Yes. Everybody was anticipating yes, the arrival of Sunshine, yes. as I like to call him. Absolutely. But when you look at Trevor Lawrence and what he's able to do, talk about his development and now 
the, the expectations are going to be so much higher on a young man like that. Well, here's what I saw uh, watching him last year. Early in the year when he first took over, he would run what they call. Yes. And as you saw him evolve, he had the keys to the car. And he started to be... He started to orchestrate from the line of scrimmage. He would see things, and you would see him with high levels of confidence checking off, yeah. orchestrating to his guys, hey, see this, because that, that's a sight adjustment for us. Yeah. And really helping those guys understand what they needed to do, what the adjustments were, what the reads were, and he was making those big-time plays and big-time throws. I can tell you, watching that national championship game, Alabama tried to do a lot of things, disguising coverages, moving guys around. Yeah. He was anticipating everything that they were doing. It's clear that his IQ and understanding what defenses are trying to do to him, and I think that's the most important part when you're playing quarterback. It, it, everybody, every quarterback knows how to run their stuff. But what is the defense trying to make me have to take? And how do I respond to that in a way that allows my offense to remain successful and exploit them big? And what I saw in that national championship game was he was willing to make any throw. He was willing to turn around and hand the football off. And I think that's the big key. I think as long as they keep ETN and those guys involved in that running game, particularly with some play action things and RPOs, I think this kid has a chance to be more than excellent because he really understands what defenses are trying to do and how to attack them. You look at this offense, you look at this defense, special teams, they have everything there. What's the biggest issue for Syracuse? I mean, not Syracuse, I guess I'm Clemson. Freudian slip. Yeah. Because Syracuse has been that team two years in a row, not quarterbacks out. Right. Give them a tough time. Absolutely. At home, the game I called a few years ago. So maybe I'm giving you the answer to my question that I'm going to ask you, but you may see something outside of that. What is Clemson's biggest issue besides Clemson? If they don't focus on themselves, what can happen to them in the conference? I think, I think going up to Syracuse is just a dangerous game, and here's why. And it goes back to uh, what Coach Babers told us last year and then and previous before that, right? Yeah. When he first got there and he his first ACC media day, he walked around, he looked around, and he goes, my guys don't look like a lot of these guys. Yeah. Well, now his guys look like a lot of these guys. His yeah. guy, he's got some guys that look like Clemson guys. Yeah. And I think now he knows I've got I've to fight. I've got some dogs that can fight. Yeah. I can scheme it, and we're just going to play checkers against each other as coaches yeah. to figure out who's going to win the game. But I think going up there, and look, two years ago, they had that heroin experience. It was a Friday night. Quarterback got knocked out. Yeah. They yeah. got beat. And listen, that's what Syracuse can do to you up there. Yeah. The only person I've seen completely embarrass them up there in the Babers era was Lamar Jackson. We know how special yeah. he was. Yeah. Other than that, you go, into, you go into the dome right now under Dino Babers with this physical football team that knows how to play the right way. They hard-nosed, smart on defense, opportunistic on defense, and take what you give them on offense. That's a dangerous place to play. And I think, again, we talked about it, yeah. particularly on defense with Clemson. They're younger than they have been. Yeah. These guys have played, but they're still sophomores. A lot of them are even freshmen. And so you're going to have to understand what it's like to go in that environment. And I think the key – for Syracuse in that is, yeah. it's the first road game of the season <laughs> for what, Clemson. And is. that's what makes it dangerous with young guys. After a and After a and I'll tell you this. Yeah. One of the hottest places you'll ever – I've called games there. Yeah. I'm hot right now because it's just it, – we're about to be here. here. But I'll say this. That game was – it was warm that night. Yeah. Fans left and came back after halftime because they saw the game was close. That's one of the loudest places you're yes. going to play inside. I think if you're uh, Clemson, you got to know. We've got to come out firing. You said it best. Road games are always the toughest. Yeah, and the first road game for young players – they don't know what to expect. They haven't been on the plane. They haven't been to the team hotel. They don't understand the process of uh, uh, Friday night snack, pregame meal. They're figuring all of that out because they haven't been on the road. Speaking of the devil, we were talking about Syracuse. We have Dino Babers. Coach, we talked about your team, what you were able to do over the last few years. I know you're not where you want to be. Tell us what you're looking for this year as a next step. Well, I think the biggest thing is that we got to continue to be consistent and not occasional. Obviously, last year was a fantastic year. Ten wins. Haven't done that since 2001. Now everybody knows that you're capable of doing that. Now what are you going to do when the light is on you? So if we can have an opportunity to be consistently good, not occasionally great, I think we'd be really happy with what happens at the end of this year. You lose Dungy, but you have a guy in DeVito coming back at the quarterback position. The, the wide receivers you have, I don't think people realize because they don't get to see you as much as if you watch film. You're young 
young guys can really play, and your offensive line seems to be up and coming as well. I think our young our young guys are really talented. I think we've got some older guys at that position that, that can still carry us, though. You're right. I think we've got a talented underclass. We're still looking for that dynamic wide receiver in one of the recruiting classes coming in that we think that can be that, that big-time guy. But I'll tell you what, I like the guys that we're with and we, uh, that we have, and I think we can definitely win with them. And defensively, you've had some strong performances, particularly against Clemson in the last couple of years. And a pretty consistent group defensively, but where is that next step you're looking for from the defensive side of the ball with your guys in 2019? You're talking about in 2019, I really think the strength of our team is the defense. And I think the second, strong part, second strongest part of our team is actually our special teams. Lugosa winner with our freshman kicker, Sterling, our, our punter is an NFL punter. When you've got two NFL kickers and you've got a defense with that much talent coming back, we need to lead with our defense and our special teams and supplement it with our offense, believe it or not. But I really think that our defense has got some cats, and I think they're special, and I think we're going to be able to win some games on defense this year. Coach comes in and drops a few, so fresh and so clean, clean. Yeah, right. I love the all shoe right. game. All I, love all, I love it all. all so the way to the uh, hopefully it carries over to the season. Like you, we know it's going to do. Always a good time. Thank you, Coach. Right. Oh. There you go. Hey, hey. Good luck this season. Appreciate it, Coach. You guys have a good one. Always a all pleasure. Right. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. Welcome to Talking About Sports, the Carolina's number one podcast for sports. You yeah, may say trade Kimber Walker, but no Leezy. <laughs> and no Limit Larry. <laughs> I like No Limit Larry. I think I think Limit, No Limit Larry ought to get to play in time. Wow. As Kemba goes, so go the Hornets. And that's how it was last night. I, I've never wished Kemba would have won a bet more than I do right now. <laughs> now, come on down to the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. Talking about sports. Best food around. Hey, Reg, tight end to tight end. I saw Dave Doran. He's a former tight end. We didn't get a chance to get him on air, but I yeah. talked to him briefly. And the one thing I'm interested in, with Ryan Finley now being gone, right. what happens with this team? They've lost some weapons, Kelvin Harmon on the outside, but Ryan Finley made that offense go. Yes, he did. I, and I think that's going to be an interesting piece, whether it's McKay, um, who's many think is the incumbent and he's going to be the guy. Yeah. Um, and then you got the kid Hockman that was a ju Juco transfer, came from Florida State. They got to get that solidified first. And the main reason why is because that's that's been their calling card for the last few years is the quarterback that can make things go. They've got to get that worked out, find some consistency in the running game. And, I, and, and because anytime yeah. you have a young quarterback or an inexperienced quarterback, you got to have two things. You got to be able to turn around and hand that thing off, and you got to have a Charles R. Buckle at that tight end spot to take some pressure off in that short to intermediate passing game. And those are the two things that they're going to have to get done right away with Dave Dorn in this group because, listen, the expectations are high. They're still, recruiting wise, they've done a really good job even since Bradley Chubb mm -hmm. with defensive line. People know that they can do that. But can you consistently find a signal caller that can run your offense and keep you going in a positive direction, pick up first downs, and keep that really solid defense off the field? So when you look at this NC State team, especially in the run game, they lose running back Reggie Gillespie, and they relied so much on Ryan Finley. New offensive coordinators come in. Does that make a difference for this offensive team? Yeah, I think it does. And, and I think it's interesting that Kitchens is a part of that because he spent time with running backs. Yes. And so that concept tells you that he's going to have a little bit of a, I'm, I'm not going to call it a lean, yeah. but he's going to have a respect for the running game yeah. and the ability to turn around and hand the football off. And like we said, a young quarterback, inexperienced quarterback, if you can't turn around and hand that thing off, you can't find your tight end in the intermediate game, you're going to struggle. And I think Des Kitchens is going to do a really good job implementing their running backs. And they've got a few, they don't have a guy that people are going, oh, this guy, guy right. There. But they've got multiple guys that yeah. can make some plays. And I think you're going to see a little bit of a by committee until somebody steps forward. But with Des Kitchens, running that offense, being a part of the play calling, I think it'll thoroughly help them. I think the other thing, if you look at the defensive side of the ball, that's one of the things that I'm so curious to watch. Because this team, to your point earlier, when you think about their defensive fronts that they've had over the last few years, yep. that has been their calling card. Can they do that again this year coming up? 
I think they can. I think they've got enough talent there, and they've recruited well, particularly in the defensive front uh, the last few years. I think the question for me with this team is what happens in the back end? Can those guys in the back end consistently hold up, not give up big explosive plays, and allow this group up front to really get after the quarterback? We always say it. As a former defensive back, you know. If I got a defensive front that can get to the quarterback in two and a half seconds, that means I only got to cover for two and a half seconds. That's true. And as a defensive lineman, you're going, if those guys can hold up for three seconds, I can get to the quarterback in less than three seconds. If everybody's thinking three seconds, this is a chance for this group to be really, really good on defense. But that's going to be the whole key. Can this back end, can that back seven really with those linebackers flowing in space keeping those intermediate throws minimized if that back end can do their job I think this team has a chance to be really good you know I think about NC State they've been one of those teams right on the cusp and their fan base is wanting to see them get to that next level but I think that's been a, if you look at an overarching theme how do they get that big win whether it's Clemson whether it's Syracuse, whether it's any of those ball clubs, if you look at their schedule in the Atlantic, how do they get to that next step? Opportunistic. They've got to be opportunistic and create a lot of turnovers. This is a football team that, again, I, and I, I, one of the examples I always use, and I hate to use an NFL analogy with, an, with a college team, is if you go back to the Carolina Panthers in 2015, yeah. when they made that run to the Super Bowl at 15-1, and one, People can say what they want. Cam Newton had a lot of 30-yard drives to get touchdowns, a lot of 30-yard drives to get field goals because that defense was creating a lot of turnovers and giving them some shorter fields. I think if this NC State defense can do the same thing, again, we're talking about inexperience at quarterback. If they can do the same things on defense that those team, that, that team could do in 2015, I think NC State's got a chance to get that win to take them over the top. But they've got to be opportunistic on defense. And this is a team that, for me, they're probably going to need to be somewhere in the plus 20 category if they want to have a special season on in terms of turnovers. If you look at it, when you look at this NC State team, and you, you said it best, Tony Dungy's mantra when I covered the Colts was 35 or more takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. If we get those, that gives us a chance. And I think if you think about Dave Doran, his ball club has to play well on offense, but they must be better on defense. Statistically, you know, we're really good top three in rushing defense, top three in third down defense, top three in red zone defense. Uh, we need to create more takeaways on defense, in my opinion. You know, offenses are going to get yards. Uh, you guys all know the, the RPO world allows offenses to do things that really aren't fair in, in football. To have linemen downfield and throw forward passes is really hard on a defense. And so the stress gets put on the secondary if you're a team that wants to stop the run, and that's something I believe in. Uh, so our DBs obviously get a lot of the blame, and I don't think that's always their fault. You know, a lot of times they're playing one-on-one, -on -one and everyone else is trying to defend the run game, and that's just college football. But if we can get more takeaways and do what we did last year on third down in the red zone, stopping the run, create shorter fields for our offense, I think that would be outstanding for our football team. Well, that's Dave Dorn. Hey, he's been the hottest commodity in the coaching ranks for the last few yeah. years, but his NC State team has done well. When we come back, we'll take a look at Wade Forrest and the rest of the Atlanta. the phone that's when you know I was told that Mike Jr. was injured so I was like you all right and when I first walked in he was just like no I feel like I gotta throw up so I heard him run downstairs and call Miss Natalie I went upstairs to actually see Mike he seemed to be in pain I remember just hearing her voice Asking Mike, am I good? But you know, since I was breathing heavy, you know, not feeling good, I couldn't, you know, respond. Uh, he was still throwing up, and his breathing was labored, and it just put me into an alarm state. So I was uh, afraid he was going to go into coma, and I didn't, I didn't want Mike to go unconscious. I said, I'm going to call the ambulance. He just got, uh, it sounds like he got punched in the eye with uh, like a thumb, so I just got knocked vomiting. It was a pretty scary moment for us. I knew it would be a matter of time, not even a matter, before Mike was on the road. And by the time he called me back, 
He was on the rope. Three months. And uh, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Boy, you, you and these eyes, Steve. Next, we got to talk about Wake Forest. Dave Clawson and his ball club, they have been a thorn in a lot of people's side. Every time you think this team isn't going to do much, they do a nice job. What do you think about Wake Forest this year? Well, I think, I think the thing with Wake is they got to get the quarterback thing figured out. We talk about that all the time. Football is based on quarterbacks now. Yeah. But to add to that, they need to find a bell cow, bell cow guy that can just flat out make plays for them. Last year, they had a guy like Greg Dortch, punt return game, receiving game. He spent a lot of times with injuries the last couple of years. But when he was available for them, they were dynamic. Yeah. He could run a punt back for you. He could take a kickoff back for you. He could take a three-yard passing route <laughs> and turn it into 80. Yeah. You could you could give it to him on some of these, you know, RP or not RPO speed sweeps, yeah. those kinds of things. He was so dynamic for this offense, and now they don't have that. And the question is, with all the recruiting that Dave Clawson's had a chance to do since he's been there, does he have that another one of those? in his cupboard somewhere because if they don't have a key playmaker wake is not going to overwhelm you with athletes they're just not and that's not a slight on them that's not how they operate but if they can find a couple of playmakers on the outside and just get the ball to them and let those guys work in space they got a chance to, to again become major thorns in people's sides. On the defensive side, they've got to get better in the secondary. Yep. Young Jeremiah Gray out yes. of Charlotte Christian right here is going to be a three-star guy for them that can really make some plays, and I think he'll play early. Yeah, I think if so you, too. Yeah, if you look at Wake, transition down the road to Duke, yep. David Cutcliffe, Daniel yep. Jones, Giant people are upset they got he got drafted so high. We've watched this young man for a long time. We long saw time. games with him and Will Greer going in back high in the school, day. going at each other. Yeah. That was a good time. So when you think about this Duke team, what do you see with them now that they've lost their bell cow at the at the quarterback position? What can they do as a team to improve on offense and defense? Well, I think I think one of the things that's going to immediately help them that they're going to get back is strength in the secondary. Yeah. Mark Gilbert was out all of last year. One of their talented corners had an ACL injury. He missed. A, all of the year, yeah, basically, sure did, yeah. he's back. Um, I talked to him at guy. lockdown guy, and I talked to him in the offseason. Like yes, <laughs> and it's over. And I talked to him in you know last year around this time, and yeah. he was he was trying to decide yeah. what he was going to do with his future. And he thought about going to the NFL, thought better of it, which I think was yeah. a smart move out of him. So he's going to be back to help anchor this secondary. I think you get a guy like that back. Now you know one side of the field. Yeah. I'm comfortable. I can roll everything else the other way, and we can do some things defensively to create uh, some big plays, create some turnovers, create some havoc, some zone blitz type things. You can send extra guys from up front in the front seven. I think that's what's really going to help Duke is they can be a little more dynamic on defense. And, oh, by the way, David Cutcliffe's still there calling plays on offense. If that guy's calling plays on offense, you got a chance to win ball games. You think about Duke and what – what they've come through and you tell people you I've seen it where they were in, in a desperate state yes they built a new facility they got all those things they've going done all the new things to Wallace Wade Stadium that and they stadium recruited awesome. this area tough and all the state of North Carolina and tried to really do a nice job getting young kids out of the state of North Carolina they've done a really nice job and I think that's why you see them challenging and some people don't 
they always write them off, but I always say be careful of both Duke and Wake Forest because they get enough kids locally that really want to play. And I think the other thing with Duke that they've done a really good job with, and that includes a guy like Daniel Jones, um, and, and is they're finding the independent schools in the state of North Carolina. Uh, they call it the independent yeah. school uh, – independent – Independent school, school yeah. athletic associate, whatever they call it. <laughs> but those are a lot of the kids that can meet the academic requirements right. that Duke requires. And so when they're doing a really good job recruiting in those areas, and a lot of these kids can really play some football. Yeah. So you add those components and you get them to Duke. That's why this football team has a chance and they continue to be dangerous. You hit the nail on the head. David Cutcliffe has done a really nice job. Let's take a listen to what he said about his, his school and what's going to happen in, in 2019. I have great confidence in, in Quentin. Um, I had great confidence in Daniel his first full year as a starter. Uh, they're a little different. One of the things that I've been fortunate to do in my career is have to replace first round draft choice quarterbacks. It's not an easy task. I think the thing that we've got to realize is that it's all about what they can function within and what they do well. Uh, Daniel Jones is got a new era, a new opportunity. We're happy there. I could not be more excited. How about having a fifth-year senior to step up and step in? When I look at Alabama, I see recruiting. I see coaching. I see conditioning. I see all eight phases of the game being outstanding. So what that does for us, it's a clear and concise signal to these young men as to what you have to do to prepare. But you, you do what good teams do. You prepare and you go play well. And uh, that's our focus in, in entirety. There you have Coach David Cutcliffe giving us a look into what's going to happen with this season. We'll be right back to talk a little bit more from ACC Media Kickoff. Welcome to Talking About Sports, the Carolina's number one podcast for sports. Yeah, Somebody said trade know. Kimba Walker, but no Leezy. <laughs> and no Limit Larry. <laughs> I like No Limit Larry. I think I think limit, No Limit Larry will get to does. play in time. Oh. Wow. As Kemba goes, so go the Hornets. And that's how it was last night. I, I've never wished Kemba would have won a bet more than I do right now. <laughs> now, come on down to the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. Talking about sports. Best food around. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. Every time I do that, our coaches get mad at me at the end of the season. Well, nobody else did that. He's deadly in the return game, great leader, he's an all-around great guy. And I just seen immediately, um, just like the, the impact of everything that, that Coach Diaz was doing. So last year, Reg, when we did this, <laughs> the hurricane, oh, the man. U. Man. What, what, did, didn't you pick the U? I, I picked the U to win the league. Hey, the coastal is always crazy. I used yeah. to always call it the crazy coastal because yeah. it is. It is. It, it is. It, 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 but when you think about the, the landscape of the league and whether you go to the coastal or stay in the Atlantic, right. give us some more thoughts that you have about the ACC in general come, this coming year. Well, I just think there's so much to see this year. Um, you've got the change at Louisville. Um, you know, with Satterfield going up there and taking over that program, what do they look like? His calling that card. is bare. Yes. Ooh. But and and here's the craziest part. His calling card at App State was defense. Yes. That cupboard is not bare at Louisville on defense. It doesn't exist exactly. on defense. And it hasn't for a few years. And it years. hasn't for a few Up years. Front. Right. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see what they look like. And then Florida State. I mean, obviously Willie Taggart. The heat's been on, yeah. and, and the heat is turning up. And uh, I heard him earlier say, uh, somebody asked him, say, hey, Coach, you implemented the Gulf Coast offense. Yeah. What is that offense designed to do? And, and Coach Taggart, kind of matter-of-factly, and I love him, I respect yeah. him for this, he said, it's designed to score. Yeah. And you know what? What coach's offense isn't designed to score? Yeah. And so I, I think that was a fair answer from him. But at the same time, I think the big thing with Coach Taggart is there's been a lot of sort of – phrases from him over the yeah. last couple of years since he took over. And I think people just want to see wins. We were there here last year. Brian Burns no longer there. Correct. Harlan Barnett has to now replace him That's right. and some others on that defensive front. 
but they expect to always have some really good young defensive players. They, I mean, they're, they're talented in every kind of way. And that's what's surprising over the last few years. You go back in the, in the past, guys like Mario Edwards, uh, Eddie Goldman. I mean, you kick, you can go on and on. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey, Tank Carradine. I mean, you can go down the line with all these guys that have been playmakers for them. And we haven't seen that in the last few years. And oh, by the way, you look at a guy like George Campbell, the wide receiver, highly touted coming in. He's gone. He's at Penn State now. He re he transferred. Guys are leaving. It it's going to be interesting to see what Florida State looks like and how much better they look this year uh, in 2019 compared to 2018. Yeah, when you look at this league, there's so much that we can say. We know Clemson is going to be strong like they always are. But who is going to challenge? And I think that's another. If I look at BC, yeah. they have to improve on the offensive side. Anthony Brown has to get better. Uh, they've got some really good, talented weapons. They've lost tight ends. They can always they, run the ball. But the thing about it, I don't want to see them kill their run game. Right. They've got to do a better got, job yes. of spreading that out. Yeah. So I think the real thing, Reg, is with the running game, A.J. Dillon can't be the guy that has to do everything. They need to spread that out to allow him a chance not to get injured. He had a lot of carries last year, and I think it's going to be key to make sure they disperse those a little bit differently. So when I look at B.C., what can they do? There's so many different factors, but when you look at this Atlantic Coast Conference, there's some opportunities for teams that maybe haven't been there to make that step up. Absolutely. I, and, and you look around this league, I think Virginia is going to be very much improved. Yeah. Um, we've seen their improvement over the years since they made the change and, and got Bronco yeah. Mendenhall in there. Bryce Perkins is probably Bryce, the second best. Yes guy in the conference yes, in my I agree. opinion. I totally agree with that. And then you look at Virginia Tech. They're just in a flux. We don't yeah. know what's going on. Fuente's got guys leaving and coming and yeah. he's recruiting and that offense hasn't looked like we the saw it look in the past. Their defense yeah. hasn't been bruising like we're used yeah. to. That old lunch pail mentality under yeah. Frank Beamer. We haven't seen that in a long time. And so I'm curious to see what the Virginia schools look like. First difficulty is to get the players to trust you because they just lose their coach. They've had two tough seasons. And here comes this new guy in that's been out of coaching for five years. Some people question whether he's too old or should he be back. Or, uh, and you walk into a group of, of faces that have a void. So you gotta get, you got to get them to buy in. you got to communicate with them. Then the trust and respect has to build up. I think we've got all that. I really think we're in good shape there. And uh, the strength of this team right now would be running backs. To me, all three are really good. And... You, you take Michael Carter so fast in space. Um, Jamonte Williams, I think, may be a superstar. He's 220 pounds and could fly. And, and then you, you take uh, um, Mr. Williams, he can do everything. He just, he's a special teams tough. He's kind of, he's the leader. He's, he's the guy um, for, for everything we do. Um, offensive line to me has is, is got to get tougher. Uh, just their mentality. There's some talent there, but got to get tougher. Uh, tight ends will be a strength. Uh, I think that they can run and play. Um, wide receiver can be. I don't think we're there yet. You got a few. Daz has been really good, but we, we got to catch balls. We've dropped too many balls in our past. Um, and, and we've got to make sure that we get free in space because people will bump us some and, and try to take that away. Uh, defensive line is, is uh, really good with the first group. Uh, there's no depth. We've got to develop depth. And that's such a, a key. Uh, linebacker to me is all over the place a little bit. We got young guys that are talented, but nobody's really. We, we got uh, Eugene Asante coming in there, but we hadn't seen them all play yet. You got uh, Chaz, that's uh, Surratt, that's new, and a quarterback playing linebacker. Uh, you got a freshman with uh, Quadri Jackson, and um, Gimmel's good. He's got to get stronger. And, and Dominic Ross is a really good pass rusher. Got to get better in space. And then in the secondary, I, I think we're going to be good. we just got to figure out who one of the corners is going to be. Patrice is playing really well. Uh, you've got the other safeties. I, I think we'll be fine with, with Jones and Wolfuk and, and, and especially with Miles Dorn. Uh, but we got to find the other pieces there, and, and that's pieces that we haven't seen yet. And then you got a brand-new kicking game. So, Reg, everybody's excited. And spring game was a testament to North Carolina. Mac Brown yeah. coming back. Yeah. All of those former guys, their greats, all showing up. What do you think about the North Carolina team and their, their, their faithful? I think, I think the concept of football is rejuvenated at Keenan Stadium, period. 
that that whole the whole thought process that North Carolina can be a factor on the football field is back with a guy like Mac Brown in the fold. Now the question is how fast, how quickly can he turn that thing around and get it going in the right direction? They've done a pretty good job, I thought, on the recruiting trail for a short window, really, for Mac. Yeah. But when you look at everything that they've done as a whole, I think they're going in the right direction. It's going to be interesting to see what the product on the field starts to look like because if if that product looks the least bit improved, yeah. I think that's going to add to the fever pitch, add to the anticipation. Yeah. And I think Mac Brown, you know, I, and I also think the time at the end at Texas for Mac Brown taught him a lot. It did. I'm either going to do this or I'm not going to do this. I can't halfway do it. I can't just CEO. Yeah, you gotta, I got to be gotta in here. It. And he also now, I think, with North Carolina, has a couple of guys like Dre Bly, you mentioned yep. earlier, Tommy Thigpen. He's got some guys that understand. The, the history there and the culture yes. and we're around with them, even on the infrastructure, yep. guys that are behind the scenes that you don't know about. I don't know if that's going to mean wins right away, but I do know it's going to mean they understand what it means to be a Tar Heel. And in this state, pretty important. Yep, that's absolutely right. And at the end of the day, it's going to come down to wins. And those guys were at that program when they won a lot of games. And they're going to force kids to get better, to learn how to win football games. The biggest thing that this team is going to do is execute better. They may not always have the best players. They're going to execute better because they're going to be taught about execution and the importance of it. I just want them to play Return of the Mac every time. If I go to a game, I want to hear. That's what should play when they come out of the tunnel. Every single time. I agree. Shout out to Mark Morrison. <laughs> Well, we're, we're going to wrap it up here. We're in hot Charlotte. Hey, I, I'm sweating. I'm ready for football. Me too. But I know the fire alarm went off. It didn't stop us. we got a lot more coverage of ACC football. We hope to check you out. Welcome to Talking About Sports, the Carolina's number one podcast for sports. You yeah, always hear Trey Kimball Walker for No Leasy. <laughs> and No Limit Larry. <laughs> I like No Limit Larry. I think, I think limit, No Limit Larry will get to play in time. Wow. As Kemba goes, so go the Hornets. And that's how it was last night. I, I've never wished Kemba would have won a bet more than I do right now. <laughs> now, come on down to the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. We're talking about sports. Best food around. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. Welcome to Talking About Sports, the Carolina's number one podcast for sports. You yeah, always hear you Trey Kimball Walker for No Leasy. <laughs> and No Limit Larry. <laughs> I like No Limit Larry. I think, I think No Limit Larry will get to play in time. Wow. As Kemba goes, so go the Hornets. And that's how it was last night. I, I've never wished Kemba would have won a bet more than I do right now. <laughs> now, come on down to the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. Talking about sports. Best food around.